the introduction. I'm George Williams, um, and uh, Tal uh, Raffaelli is here with me as well. Uh, I'll be starting out, um, and then Tal will um, join us uh, uh, further on in the presentation for, for a demo um, and some more content. So I'm going to stop the video here, get the presentation started. Uh, all right, so there, there's been an uptick in the use of uh, the concept and the term multimodal search in, in various elastic search contexts, such as in recent meetups and elastic search user groups. And a lot of the conversation has been about how to efficiently combine different data types, such as dense vectors uh, and, and keyword text. And so in this meetup, that's going to be um, our, our focus. We'll take some time to define what we mean by multimodal search how Elasticsearch facilitates uh, multimodal search. We'll talk about how we can speed up um, this kind of search for um, real-time performance on large databases into the millions and billions of documents. Uh, and we'll show uh, a demo of how um, our Elasticsearch plugin um, can speed up this kind of search as well. We'll discuss the architecture and how you can get involved in our uh, project. So that's the agenda there on the right. On the left, uh, that's a picture of our headquarters in Sunnyvale, California, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley. We have offices worldwide in Tel Aviv, also uh, Austin, Texas, Taiwan, and in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. We've been around for over 25 years, focusing much of that time building high-performance memory chips. Um, and a, a little bit of a spoiler alert, we've been working on a data center accelerator chip uh, that we'll chat more about um, later in this talk. Let's start out by defining multimodal search. And let's use a visual example there you see um, at the left. Uh, it's a great example uh, provided by our friends at Walmart Labs, uh, and it's showing three different ways in which a user may want to fine tune their search uh, in here, starting with a canonical large cabinet uh, that you see there on the left. So the first one at the top is using uh, is fine tuning based on a wood type or color. The one below that is using a brand name, uh, and the one below that is using a, a price range. And the the fine tune matches that you see there on the right are you know they're obviously similar to the input query image, but they also satisfy the requested keywords or filters that are also part of the query. So this is a great example of multimodal search in an e-commerce context. We have combined uh, different modalities, right? Uh, for example, an image uh, and a keyword, and the result is a combination of, of the modes. Um, now, uh, multimodal search can be challenging when the modes have different data types. And, and this is true of this kind of search here, where we have keywords combined with an image. Um, and it, it really, in order to understand how we perform this kind of multimodal search efficiently, we need to first talk a little bit about embeddings. And so we're going to digress a little bit and talk about uh, embeddings, which is fast becoming the standard for numerically representing unstructured data like, like images. Um, so uh, again, another uh, instructive visual example uh, there at the top left. Um, it's a graphic from a paper uh, written by a company Flipkart a few years ago, and it's depicting a small portion of their product catalog. Each image at the periphery out here um, is a picture of a product, um, in this case, uh, shirts. And each image is assigned a numeric vector. Uh, you can think of this as a coordinate in a high dimensional uh, vector space. Products that appear visually similar to the eye well, those products also cluster together in the numeric vector space, depicted as that big blob here uh, in the middle. Uh, th this blob is sometimes called an embedding space, uh, and individual points uh, in that space are those, those embeddings, uh, those vectors. So searching this space, how do you do that? Searching is composed of taking uh, uh, an input query, in this case, an image, converting it to its embedding, its vector representation, projecting that into the embedding space, um, and, and locating the, the nearest neighbors to, to that point in this embedding space. Um, and these days, this is known as, as several different um, uh, names like K nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor search, vector search. Uh, we're seeing neural search pop up 
Um, and that's because AI and deep learning is playing a, a big role in how um, raw data like images is uh, vectorized into, uh, into its embedding. So several years ago, the best work in creating these semantically rich vectors were uh, often buried in research papers. Um, and you know, the demos were, were really not production worthy proof of concepts. Uh, these days, the, you know, all, this, all this work around embeddings and nearest neighbor search, it's, it's pretty much successfully made it out of the lab. Every major e-commerce company that deals with um, searching product catalogs comprising of images is heavily invested, um, not only in, in you know, producing the best kinds of embeddings for, for the data, but also in building production-worthy systems that scale, into millions, that scale to millions of users and billions of, of products. Uh, and these are just uh, the usual suspects um, I'm showing here, companies that lead research and product development and embeddings. Uh, and, and the term dense vectors is, is often used and, and definitely used uh, in Elasticsearch when we're talking about uh, embeddings. Beyond e-commerce, there are other use cases for these dense vectors and nearest neighbor search popping up in other domains. Uh, I'm showing just a, a few here. These happen to be the ones that my company is developing search products for. Uh, and this includes uh, chatbots, question and answering document search systems based on natural language processing, uh, AI-based digital signal processing and computer vision for satellite and earth observational systems in space, uh, malware and threat detection in cybersecurity, uh, in large-scale biometrics like face recognition and video search, um, uh, and in, in molecule search and AI-based drug discovery. So it's useful now to circle back to Elasticsearch and, and how it supports this. Uh, some of you know uh, Elasticsearch has support for dense vectors and nearest neighbor search introduced in version 7. For those that haven't seen it, it's uh, pretty straightforward adding dense vector search into your existing elastic search workflow. Uh, here you see the, the query part of the JSON payload that cor corresponds to a dense vector search. It's worth pointing out a few things that make it different than a typical search. Firstly, you'll notice um, the, the query vector here, the numeric vector. Uh, I'm showing an example of, of a small one uh, in practice, you know, the size of these vectors tend to be in the tens, hundreds, um, even thousands of, of dimensions. Um, notice here that uh, the query um, is doing a match all. And so it actually needs to visit um, each of the documents in, in the database. Um, and it does this because Elasticsearch performs the distance computation between the, qu the query vector and all the other vectors um, uh, in the in the database and it's using uh, this pairwise distance function here this cosine um, similarity function right here so the cosine function um, it's which is often used for computing a, a pairwise distance or similarity between vectors the actual range of cosine is of course minus one to one we need to add one to it because elastic search um, only scores on on positive numbers so that's why you see that that offset there um, and then the result of this query uh, um, is, is a, um, uh, using this cosine similarity as the score, um, it, it re-ranks based on that score. Uh, and oftentimes you only care about um, a few of the items in the result, the closest matches. Um, and that's where we, we typically talk about the K and KNN or the K in, in top K. All right, so that was, uh, uh, a basic dense vector search in Elasticsearch. So now let's look at an example of multimodal search where we fine tune the dense vector search with uh, keywords. So uh, notice here that we're keeping pretty much everything the same as, as what you saw before, um, where we have a, the query vector, um, we're keeping the cosine um, similarity as the, the distance function. Um, but it's, it's different in that we have this, um, this filter here, which is performing, performing the keyword search on this, on this color attribute. So compared to what you just saw before, 
this is sometimes referred to as a restrictive query uh, because we first restrict the number of ob objects that are returned um, before we do the pairwise distance um, computation. So uh, a summary of um, what we just looked at in, in the last uh, search, it's, it's worth digging into the details a little bit. Um, so we started at the top here, right? We have a dense vector in our query, plus we have a keyword. Um, then we perform a filter on that keyword. This returns uh, a subset um, of the documents in the database. And with, with each uh, document that's returned here and the query, we perform a pairwise distance function. In the case, we just saw it was cosine uh, similarity. Those items get scored based on that distance function, and then we we choose just the uh, the nearest k neighbors that we might be we might be interested in. So you'll notice that the bottleneck for this kind of query can appear right here uh, in in this box, uh, and that's and that's where Elasticsearch performs a distance computation between the query uh, and all the documents that were resulted from this filter uh, here. Now, if the filter still returns a bunch of documents, and uh, as the database grows, this can become a, a fairly significant bottleneck in, in the search. And this is a known uh, limitation in the current version of Elasticsearch. Um, GSI, so we're introducing a, a plugin that gets around this bottleneck. Uh, our approach is, is based on custom hardware, um, and our hardware can massively parallelize all of those pairwise distance computations. We achieve uh, hyper-efficient performance uh, with low latency and low power. We support batch queries, uh, and importantly, we scale to millions and billions of documents uh, via an approximate nearest neighbor um, search algorithm. Uh, okay, so we, we'd like to show you a, a live demo, um, and uh, at this point, I'll hand it over to Tal, um, and he'll show you uh, an e-commerce search demo um, within Elasticsearch, um, and uh, we'll discuss a bit about our architecture and, and also how the plugin works. Thank you, George. All right. Uh... So I will share my screen. All right, hopefully that works now. I stopped sharing, Tal. Yeah, all right. All right. All right, do you see my screen? Uh, yes, I see it, looks good. Awesome, awesome. All right, so uh, I will show you um, now a demo that uh, illustrates, it, it doesn't illustrate, it actually runs, uh, uh, but it shows you the, uh, the latency and accuracy that we have in our uh, GSI Elasticsearch plugin. So as you can see, we have uh, two uh, data sets, two, two indices to be uh, precise. Uh, one index has uh, 1.4 uh, million uh, documents each of the documents has a dense vector, and the other one is a 700K. So um, as, as you can see, we have here some of the, of the images. Of course, is, each image is uh, a represented, a, is, is actually a document in Elasticsearch. Each document also has a other metadata and text, and also, of course, a dense vector that uh, represents the image. So, to show you, uh, for example, let's uh, have a search. Uh, th this is this is a cache, but let's make another search. You can see uh, the time uh, takes taking me to apply uh, this query. Uh, by the way, this data set has um, a, a approximately one thousand five hundred uh, features. So it's very very fast if you if you compare it to the uh, Elasticsearch uh, solution or other uh, uh, solution uh, available, and uh, th this is a single query search. Um, 
and what we also have because our uh, hardware, our APU is is very good at um, performing batch queries. We also have the the option to perform multiple queries at once. So um, let let me show you for example. Let's go again to ImageNet, and let's say uh, pick some of the of the images, random images. Right, can you can see here? I have uh, nine queries, and uh, let's take something else. Ten queries. I apply the search, and you see that uh, the time is not linear. I have here uh, 10 queries. I, I made them in a batch and it took uh, 125 uh, milliseconds. So approximately uh, 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 12 milliseconds per query. So it's very fast. So uh, we are actually, we are leveraging the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the APU which can perform a batch query is very, very fast. So we, we have, uh, because Elasticsearch uh, doesn't have the, the ability to uh, get um, a batch of queries and, uh, and apply it um, in one batch, he, he has, the Elasticsearch has the M-search, the multi-search, but he, when you uh, create a plugin, it doesn't allow you to get all the batch and return it as a batch. So we have a custom endpoint for that and also, we have the ability when you perform a regular search uh, uh, in Elasticsearch, single search, we aggregate the queries and send them also as a batch if possible. So this is very, very good when you have a, a big throughput of a search. So uh, this is a, it regarding the demo. And uh, now I will let you, George, go again to the presentation. Okay, great, uh, Tal. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and uh, I will put the slides back up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you just tell me next when you want me to go to the next slide. All right. All right, so, um, so you rem remember the uh, last uh, JSON that uh, uh, George showed you that um, Elasticsearch has uh, its um, syntax for uh, uh, making a call to a cosine similarity function. So here we have a similar syntax, even the more simple syntax. Um, uh, our query is called the GSI similarity, as you can see. You provide it uh, the dense vector uh, field name. By the way, it's the same dense vector field type. If you already indexed uh, the data type dense vector that uh, Elasticsearch uh, uh, got out of the box, then you can use it. Uh, and of course, the vector itself and the top K is optional. And, uh, and then you apply uh, the, in the search and you get the uh, same results, the same format uh, results. All right, next. All right, so a bit on the architecture. As you can uh, understand, on the right side, you see a uh, illustrative uh, pictures of the APU card. We have um, a, the APU cards which uh, execute and make the similarity search very, very fast. So we use them. So in order to search on them, we first have to load the vectors into the APUs. So uh, what, what we have to do, we have to transfer the vectors from Elasticsearch into our uh, server uh, with the APUs. And uh, we, we'll talk about it later, but we, we can, you can either, if you have Elasticsearch on the cloud, you can, all you have to do to use our uh, first search, all you have to do is to uh, install our uh, standard plugin. As you can see on the left side, GSI plugin, all you have to do is to install it on your Elasticsearch nodes and, uh, and the, the plugin will point to our uh, data centers. 
And the, another thing you can do, if, if you have it on, you want it on-prem, you can also have everything on-prem. So these are two solutions. And uh, what, what we see now, if you see, you see the, uh, the line uh, to the right of the GSI plugin, that's the separator between our server and the your Elasticsearch server. So, uh, so what we, we, we need to do first, we, we transfer all the vectors from Elasticsearch, only the vectors and, and, the, and the IDs, the document IDs, because we need them also. We load everything and then we, uh, when we apply the search, we of course, uh, uh, we, uh, because we developed the, the plugin and uh, we, um, we have the listener which listens to every search call, we get the, um, we know when a GSI similarity query is performed, we get the query vector, we transfer it uh, to the server, we get back the result after we are calling the, uh, our uh, relevant service, and we get the, the result back into Elasticsearch. So this is done uh, very fast. Uh, so one of the challenges we had is, um, and we, we are, we are make, we're improving it, is the way uh, to transfer uh, vectors. So, uh, so as you can see, we have uh, components here, we have also Kafka, because uh, we also uh, we stream the, uh, you know, you, you can of course index additional documents to your index, and they will consist of new, in, uh, new vectors, and we, uh, we will uh, automatically update the, the vectors uh, so you will make search and it will be transparent for you. So this is uh, regarding uh, this architecture. Uh, you can go next. And uh, here you can see another view. We actually use the standard way of Elasticsearch to perform the search. Uh, for example, let's say you want to make uh, fr from the left, you can see search request. Let's say you have uh, index my index field, my, my vector, and you uh, perform the search. Uh, you go to the coordinate node. Uh, the coordinate node, let's say the index consists of three shards. So uh, this is the nature of Elasticsearch. It splits the, the, the calls par parallel uh, and go to the relevant shards. And then uh, our plugin, it will call our plugin callback and we will call uh, the search to each of uh, the data set. Actually, we uh, store a, a data set per shard. So shard vectors are uh, stored in each of the data sets which are loaded into our hardware. And then we perform uh, the search in, in parallel and it's done very fast. Uh, next. So here you can see, as I said previously, uh, you can either have, if you, in most cases you have your Elasticsearch on the, on the cloud, uh, any cloud provider, AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Azure. So um, if you want to use this capability, all you have to do is to install uh, the plugin and uh, the plugin automatically will uh, talk with uh, our cloud. So uh, uh, this is very simple. And as I said, it's, um, it's done with the standard dense vector. And on the top left, you, you, um, you can see also there is a prem, of course, on-prem uh, solution. Uh, okay, next. That's, uh, that's it. All right, you can continue. Uh, all right, Tal. Um, yeah, thanks for that explanation of, of the, the architecture. So I'd like to just um, point out uh, some benchmarking activity that, that we've done um, with, with our plugin. Um, we've compared it with uh, the vanilla Elasticsearch um, uh, dense vector support uh, with another product called uh, Vespa. Um, and uh, you can see here um, our latency numbers are, are quite quite good compared to um, those solutions there, uh, maintaining high recall uh, on these two data sets. So just 960, uh, SIFT, 128, very, very common data sets that, that are used for, for benchmarking. Um, you know, one, one thing that's becoming very important in the data center is um, the use of power. Um, and that's another area 
that uh, we are uh, showing a lot of advantage um, as well. Um, regarding benchmark two, um, Tal, I believe the, these are the benchmarks that um, you were showing uh, during the demo, the, the fashion database and the uh, ImageNet database. Um, yeah, just uh, just uh, the only difference is I showed ImageNet 1.4 ah, million. Right. And, right. But, but, we, but we also have the 14 million of, uh, we, we also used 18 million of, uh, of Paolo, which is uh, also here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and again, um, comparing, uh, here we're focusing on, on the platform, uh, a server-grade um, Intel-based server here, Xeon Gold, um, and uh, our processing chip here. Um, here we're showing our uh, low latency performance compared to CPU uh, on one query. And then as Tal mentioned, um, we can get very good performance on, on batch queries um, as well. Right. So, you know, just in summary, advantages of of our our plugin. Um, you know, we have we have this fully deployed um, in our in our GSI data centers. Um, as Tal mentioned, uh, if if you are invested in any of the public clouds, um, we we have a way in which uh, you can start using uh, our hardware. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Batch queries, multiple queries. Um, supported by by our systems, um, the support for multiple databases, as as Tal mentioned, um, and and of course uh, multimodal search, um, uh, we're supporting uh, as well, uh, given the syntax that Tal was um, explaining earlier. So um, you know if you're having any issues with you know scaling your can and deployment. Uh, or you just want to kick the tires on embeddings, your new to vector search. Uh, we're making our plugin and our hardware available now via our evaluation program. Um, we have different kinds of engagements to, to suit your situation. Uh, we can give you access to an Elasticsearch cluster in our data center. Um, for on-prem customers, um, we can also send you out our, our boards um, with a, a generous license for, for our plugin to evaluate it. Uh, and as Tal mentioned, we have a hybrid model um, where you install our plugin um, at, at your Elasticsearch cluster. Um, and then our plugin will route uh, requests and response, responses of, of uh, vector search um, to our hardware uh, in our data center. All right, so um, that was our presentation. Uh, if you are interested in our eval program, uh, please follow up at the email address listed here for more information or uh, more information about um, our Elasticsearch uh, plugin and implementation. Um, there's the link to our, um, our white, pipe, white, white paper. Um, and in general, uh, you know, we, we blog regularly, we write regularly about um, you know, what we're doing with Elasticsearch. KNN, uh, vector search, many of the other applications and, and algorithms uh, we're enabling uh, with our chip. Uh, we blog regularly. Um, you can visit our, our blog site. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter um, to get the latest updates. Uh, and that's it. Faith, I think we are ready for a Q&A. Awesome. All right, folks, if there are any questions, please um, put them in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, not seeing any quite yet. It's always a fun little dance at the end of meetups because people tend to stay curious what questions will be asked, but sometimes they don't get too many. Oh. All right. 
are you supporting syntax for hybrid BM25 and ANN score? What's the latency like calling your hosted vectors in computed similarity? All right, do you want me to? Oh yeah, uh, go ahead, the, Tal. I, I was on mute, but uh, pl please feel free to field the question. Yeah, sorry. All right. So, um, so Sim, um, regarding your question, we, uh, we, we are currently developing the, the, this, uh, this uh, feature of which, yes, you will be able to uh, apply both a text search and uh, a ANN, as you as you uh, <clears throat> saw previously in the demo, you will you will be able to apply both together, and the, the latency will be uh, very good. Um, be, because because as you saw the the, the KNN is very very fast, and um, and uh, that's that will be available. Okay, awesome. Another question. Are you planning to support so solar at some point? Uh, you know, that name looks very familiar. Um, <laughs> Hi, Dimitri. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, maybe you can fill this one tall. <laughs> No, no, I, I just uh, said uh, hi to Dimitri. Um, uh, you, you can, I mean, currently we are supporting Elasticsearch. Maybe it will be possible uh, in the future to support also Solar at some point. It's possible. Yeah, our, our plugin architecture is highly adaptive to different kinds of um, search front ends. Um, you know, uh, Elasticsearch has been, you know, um, we've been keen to integrate with Elasticsearch for a while just because there's, there's so much broad adoption of Elasticsearch uh, in the industry um, and, and also in, in government and aerospace. Um, but we, yeah, we're certainly open to, you know, uh, fielding inquiries about other um, search front ends. Cool. And then I think that there was Great. another question earlier from Sim on how um, how you might be able to use um, the plugin um, if you're deployed on Elastic Cloud. All right. So uh, as I mentioned before, we, are, we actually develop a standard plugin for Elasticsearch. By the way, the plugin works for both the community and the XPAC edition of the Elasticsearch. So um, it can be uh, plugged to any Elasticsearch uh, node in the standard uh, way you install the Elasticsearch plugin, which is very, very simple. So also on Elastic Cloud, you will be able to, to install it. Awesome. Um, I see that somebody has raised their hand. Um, okay, I'm going to allow you to talk, um, Didier. You have a question? Okay. Uh oh, they went silent. <laughs> Have you, do you already have a target date to release the plugin to all customers? Uh, 
Um, you know, I, I think uh, at this meetup, we we are uh, announcing our our evaluation program. So you know, we're we're definitely you know talking to um, customers, potential customers, and partners. Um, and um, we've deployed tall. I believe we've tested on uh, for the hybrid deployment. We've tested on AWS, um, where you have a elastic. Uh, search cluster on AWS and it's proxying the requests and responses to our cloud. Um, uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think the edit distance between AWS and Azure and Google Cloud is very small. So, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to say that, you know, we're officially supporting all the public clouds right now. Yeah, but, we, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So de definitely reach out to the Elasticsearch at GSI Technology um, dot com if you're if you're interested in in joining our evaluation program, and we'll figure out you know what the right uh, what the right way is to to get you started with with your data set. Um, as I mentioned, we have a few different engagements that that should suffice for for most users uh, to kick the tires on uh, on our plugin. Awesome. So I see that Pat has answered a question from Kevin. Are you selling the cards? And Pat says, yes. We have an open question from Kevin asking, I think, how much they cost. Uh, I, I will let Pat handle this one. Yeah, those ones, we'll, we'll take that one um, offline because obviously that, that differs for, for different models. Um, yeah, it, it, it depends on... Yeah, it, it depends on because we have multi board kinds of deployments and multi rack kinds of deployments, depending on like the size of your database and how big you anticipate that database um, uh, getting. Uh, and so, yeah, it, it'll really it'll depend on the on database and, and, and the types of metrics, performance metrics you're, you're going to want. Um, but yeah, yeah, we can we can definitely get into some more detail um, offline. Um, and just just reach out to us uh, via that uh, that email address there. Awesome. Well, if there aren't any other questions, thank you so much, George and Tal. This was a, a great presentation and. Um, Folks hope to see you at, at a future Elastic Meetup. And as a reminder, I will send out um, the recording uh, to this meetup, which will be a link to our YouTube channel once it's been processed. So thanks again, George. Thanks, Tal. Really appreciate it. Great, great. And, and Faith, thanks for, thanks for having us uh, at this meetup. Yeah, of course. All right. Thank Bye, you. everybody.